Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where OP works with the sluttiest nurse on planet Earth. Our next Reddit post is from It's Strip. I worked in emergency radiology in the early 2000s. The overwhelming majority of our film developing back then was done using daylight processors. This was pre-digital radiography. But the occasion would still arise every now and again when you'd need to hit a darkroom to develop your radiographs. The darkrooms were fairly cramped, loud, nearly made you dizzy with chemical odor, were hot and muggy, and almost entirely dark except for a blazing red safe light in the corner just so that we could see what the heck we were doing. Our countertops were kept clean, but the majority of the room was usually pretty busted, especially the ER darkroom. Entirely too many times, I'd rotate around the little revolving door from the trauma hall to that particular darkroom and be mere inches away from hospital staff, half naked, and going at it. I should also add that revolving darkroom doors do not lock. At all. I was almost always carrying a highly time-sensitive film anytime I did go to the darkroom. So any offending perverts were guaranteed a masterclass in profanity while they hastily threw themselves together and ran like hell. Hospital staff passionately hugging with each other is much more common than you'd think. So I would just get pissed for a minute or two and dive back into my work. No time for love, Dr. Jones. I had this one repeat, repeat offender who was actually an emergency room nurse. She had the brass balls to eventually try to go to my supervisor after I interrupted her for the third time and get me reamed out because, quote, I purposefully interrupted a private conversation. My supervisor laughed that nurse right out of the office. To be clear, Nurse Karen had no reason nor authorization to be in the darkroom, period. From that point on, I was gunning for that tramp. It took me almost a year to nail her, but boy did I ever. OP, it sounds like you were the last guy at the hospital to do so. <laughs> I happened upon... <laughs> I happened upon the bottomless vagina one last time in my mother effing darkroom. I quickly grabbed her scrub pants, which were right between the revolving door entrance and her nasty bare butt on my countertop, and whipped right back out the revolving door again. I presented the now neatly folded scrub pants to the emergency room nursing supervisor moments later, making sure the badge ID on the tramp's waistband was turned over to showcase the hussy's smiling face and name. I pointed the supervisor down the hallway to trauma and told them that nurse Naughty Bits was in the darkroom and requesting the supervisor bring her these pants. The nursing supervisor briefly looked at me like I'd grown another head, but she turned on her heel and hightailed it down to the darkroom. I never saw that skank again after that night. The married respiratory therapist that she was banging didn't have his employment helped at all by that fiasco either. I wish that I would have had the time to stay to watch the fireworks. It was apparently rather brutal and quite the scandal for a while. But unfortunately, I was already rushing to the main department darkroom to get my film developed while Nurse Trollope got hers in front of the entire emergency room on a busy weekend. I also never saw a bare bottom in my darkroom again, until I transferred hospitals. Down in the comments, this reply from Catacombs. OP, your darkroom was literally a red light district. Also, just from like a logistics standpoint to kind of point out how stupid Karen was, like yeah, the door couldn't be locked, but couldn't you just shove something into the revolving door so that when it rotates, it catches on something and doesn't revolve anymore so you'd effectively lock it? I don't know, maybe she liked getting caught. Some people are kind of into that. Our next Reddit post is from No Common. My sister-in-law is the kind of mom who always has to one-up with other kids. She constantly talks about how her kids are smarter, taller, faster than her friend's kids. She literally bragged about them peeing more than her friend's kids when they were babies, lol. It got worse when my husband and I had our twins. Suddenly, everything was a competition that her kids always won. One of my girls rolled over at four months. Well, her son had rolled over when he was just a week old. The twins both took their first steps around 13 months. Well, her daughter was running at four months. When, actually, she didn't start walking until around 16 months. 
She even changed the weight of her kids' birth weights, which makes them both heavier than the current heaviest newborn in America. It's so weird that she feels the need to tell such obvious lies, especially to people who know she's lying because they were there when her kids were small. I got annoyed when she went from lying about her own kids to telling me there's something wrong with mine. The girls are a few months shy of two years old, and they're both healthy, on track, and hitting their milestones. My sister-in-law has become obsessed with the idea that there's something wrong with them because they're not speaking in long sentences. Of course they're not. They're not even two. They're both developmentally on track, but my sister-in-law insists that her kids were speaking in five to six word phrases by 18 months. Spoiler, they weren't. Honestly, her son is almost seven, and I can still barely understand a word the kid says. My husband and I ignored her, but she took it too far when I got a call from her friend who works in early intervention who was under the impression that I was very concerned about my kids. We talked, and her friend confirmed that yes, they're on track, and no, there's nothing to worry about. I finally lost my patience. Hey, her kids are breaking almost every record there is, and that should be celebrated. We had dinner with my husband's family on Saturday. The kids were in another room, by the way, and I decided that it was the perfect time to give her my gift. A booklet I'd printed and laminated called the White Claw Book of World Records. I printed all the supposed milestones of her kids, complete with photos and info of the actual world record photos now that they had been pushed to second place. She flipped through the first couple of pages, went beet red, and called me a butthole. Her husband took the book from her and got through the first page before laughing hysterically and asking why the hell was she still lying? Apparently, this was not the first time they had talked about her lying about their kids. She stormed out and texted me later that night and asked why did I humiliate her when all she ever tried to do was help me get my kids the help they needed. But if that's how I wanted to treat her, then she would stop. So I guess it's a win for me. Our next Reddit post is from PM Georgia O'Keefe. This happened about 10 years ago. There was a Karen that had been with the company for nearly 15 years. Her title was project manager, but she was really more of an office administrator, and various internal projects would get pushed to her. These were things to help improve how the office worked, but nothing critical. One of these projects was actually deemed to be important, and it was reassigned to me. She hated this and stonewalled me all the time. It caused the project to be delayed, and I was getting flack from some of the executives because of this. When I commented that it was difficult to get information from Karen, she became super sweet and said that she was bending over backwards to help me and that I didn't understand the project. I just powered through anyways. But then there was a round of layoffs and she was one of them. Due to her time with the company, she received a three-month severance and extended benefits. It was kind of weird, but the company basically cut them monthly severance checks instead of paying them out all at once. But Karen also had to sign a non-disclosure agreement and a non-disparagement agreement on the exit, as well as confirm that she had handed over all the company material and files. I went to grab some files related to that project and everything was gone. Karen had deleted everything. This was before things like Teams, Google Drive, etc. Everything was on a shared network drive, so it wasn't super easy to get the backup. But Boomer Karen was the type that used her work email for all of her personal accounts, including LinkedIn. It was also company policy that the emails of departed employees would be forwarded to their department heads for a few months. Using this knowledge, I went to LinkedIn and sent her a message. Hi Karen, I heard about your departure. I hope you can use that time to take the vacation you talked about. By the way, I went to grab some of the files, but I noticed they were missing. Do you have backups that you could share? When she responded, it also went to her old email and thus to the department head. Don't pretend to be nice. I wouldn't be surprised if you helped me get fired. Good luck finding any of those files. I deleted everything. Screw you. Well, when that email got forwarded to HR that she had deleted everything, it was determined that she had violated the severance agreement. All severance checks to Karen were immediately stopped. Oh, so sorry, Boomer. Also, down in the comments, we have this story from Renbar. 
Frankly, the fact that she's a boomer has nothing to do with it. We had a brand shiny new intern who was finishing his two years of business school with an internship. He decided that we weren't good enough for him and found another internship. He didn't bother cleaning out his professional email box. That's how we found out that he was chatting with a schoolmate, insulting us all, giving our new pricing plans with his criticism, and making an idiot of himself. His ex-manager was furious, both with the breach of secrecy and the insults. She sent all of this information to his school, and he was expelled without his diploma. Two expensive years to learn that if you're going to break the rules, you shouldn't do it out in the open. He was a millennial. Whatever the generation, you can't cure stupidity. Then, another story from Beth. I had a boss once who did pretty much the same thing. He went to work for a competitor, but before he left, he went to one of our biggest customers and gave them all the files about how we were overcharging them and incorrectly crediting their accounts. That customer naturally reported that to our company. Our CEO, who was friendly with our competitor's CEO, called him and gave him the whole story. The guy was fired immediately. Six-figure income, company car, laptop, phone, all lost. He never went back to work in the industry. Last I heard, he was trying to open his own business. Our next Reddit post is from Internet Drama Lobster. So, some important info, we decided to have a micro-wedding with just our immediate family there, around 10 people. We got married at a venue that's known for holding large events, but we hired a smaller room there. My husband has a child with his ex, so he sees her quite often for things related to my stepkid. We were always planning on inviting her to the wedding, to see their kids all dressed up, and to generally keep a good co-parenting relationship. Before we even invited her, she informed my husband that she would be there and asked when and where it was. He was a little taken aback, but since we were planning on inviting her anyways, he just told her. On the wedding day, she showed up to the morning ceremony wearing the shortest dress I've ever seen, over stockings and suspenders. The suspenders could be seen for a good 6 inches before the bottom of the dress. Skyscraper heels, nightclub makeup, and costume jewelry. My father actually pulled me aside to ask, who hired a stripper? I found out afterwards from mutual friends that she had texted all of them asking when they were getting there. Because she had invited herself, we hadn't thought to let her know that it was a small ceremony. And when they let her know that it was family only and the reception was completely separate, she began to panic a little. And I had the best petty revenge. I asked everyone to be extra nice to her. Every time she tried to sneak away, someone would engage her in conversation. She was extremely uncomfortable and ended up sitting down with her coat covering her. The wedding went off without a hitch. I'm not sure what she expected to happen, but it all worked out fine in the end. Oh, okay, okay. I was confused by this story. I was like, what? What is this? Why did this woman do this? Was she just thinking she dressed slutty and upstaged the, upstaged the bride? But apparently people are much wiser to the ways of women than I am because everyone is pointing out that her plan was to go to the wedding, which she thought had a lot of people, then flirt with all the single guys there, maybe even pick up one of them, which would make her ex jealous. Our next Reddit post is from Yo F My Life. The title is, A Lawyer Threatened to Sue Me for a One Star Review. Now, his one star reviews are going viral. A lawyer scammed me and my family to the point where we're seeking recourse in court. I left the lawyer a one star review and the lawyer threatened to sue me for defamation if I didn't remove the review. And by the way, the review was 100% honest. This just backfired, which I added to my review. Now, the lawyer is getting tons of upvotes on my review and random one-star reviews harassing him from everywhere. He even got a one-star review from the Northwest Territories of Canada. Lol, they're so secluded from the rest of Canada that I didn't even know they spoke English up there. The lawyer who did me wrong is now a laughing stock. I love this top comment from Writer Skill Trees. If you win, please go back and leave another one-star review. Couldn't even defend himself in court. Do not trust him to help you. Our next Reddit post is from Snaggle Radio. My ex broke up with me just about a year into us dating. In hindsight, she was awful, but I was blind to it all. She broke up with me over the phone, which seemed a little informal from all the time that we spent together. Fast forward a week after that. 
Several individuals connected to her, but not each other, confirmed that she was, in fact, seeing another man. I didn't confront her about it, because I realized that things just don't work out sometimes. It was just the way that she went about it irked me. I'm old enough to accept that some people are just douchebags, but I also felt like she was getting away with something without feeling even a bit of remorse. I remembered that for Christmas, I bought us a really expensive couples massage spa package because she would always say that she wanted to do something like that. I had purchased some big package from a local place that cost us roughly 600 bucks. I obviously didn't have the gift card with me. So I decided to go to the spa and make up a story about how I lost the gift card. I showed them the receipt and my credit card charge. They wound up reissuing me a gift card and canceling the other. That was over a year ago, and frankly, I forgot about it. Today, I got a call from my cheating ex, the first contact in a year since breaking up. And she's screaming at me over the phone that the gift certificate is no good and the spa place accused her of stealing. And what a piece of garbage I was for reporting it to be stolen. So I called the massage place and politely explained that I didn't think that she was worthy of being called a thief. And if she really wanted to, she could just have her new boyfriend pay for her massage. Then I hung up. I'm going to make an appointment to use that card with my new girlfriend soon. Mission accomplished. Down in the comments, we have this story from Tommy with the bad breath. I left an abusive ex, but I realized that I still had the big membership store card in my name. I'd been paying for it for a while, and my ex just never said a word. They just kept using it without a peep. I knew they were using it, because when I asked customer service at the membership store, they could see all the transactions they'd made. So, I dropped their name from my membership card. 30 minutes later, my phone starts blowing up. Turns out, my ex was literally at the membership store while I was canceling the card. I just laughed and laughed, told them to go get their own. It still gives me anxiety when I think about it. Black eyes and a broken nose will never be forgotten. And then another story from Gorilla1969. I did this with an ex and his birthday gift. He was hinting hard that he wanted to see a certain band. The tickets were very expensive. I told him that maybe he would get tickets for his birthday, which he did. In his birthday card, I placed two neatly folded ticket printouts, one for each of us. He suddenly and conveniently broke up with me a couple of days later, with the concert happening only a few days after that. I knew that he was planning to go with whoever he broke up with me for, and I also knew that he was too stupid to know that I could have the tickets reprinted, which would void his copies. So, I did exactly that. I printed off new tickets, invited my brother, and we had a great time. When we left the venue, I turned on my phone and noticed that I had seven missed calls, over a dozen texts, and a very long and screaming and crying filled voicemail. He had showed up to the venue already to impress his new girl with an expensive concert. Whoops! My brother and I sat in the car and laughed at his messages while we waited for the traffic to thin out. I never responded, and after a few more hate-filled texts, I never heard from him again. F you, Howard! For those who are asking, it was the Rolling Stones and it happened in the mid-2000s. I'm pretty sure that he never got to see them live because he's too broke, and I hope he thinks of me being partially responsible for that every time he hears Start Me Up on the radio. That was r slash petty revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.